let's focus on the impact that Amcon, of, um, Amcon has had on the market. Obviously, they bought um, 3 trillion in loans, 1.7 trillion in bonds have been issued for those loans. Um, but they, I think it's really a case of the good and the bad. Obviously, the good is that they've recapitalized the banks, uh, this assisted in that regard. Mm -hmm. But the question mark is the impact that these bonds are going to have on the market, isn't it? I think one has to take uh, put the Amcon intervention or Amcon process in the context of what what are the objectives. The objectives are clear. One is that it institutionalizes and preempts a distressed situation in the system in, for the future, but it also resolves a distressed situation today. What has it done? It has taken up the toxic assets, made the sale of those banks possible. Two, it has also created some additional liquidity, and three, it takes away a major section of a major float in the market, whereby reducing the supply on the equity markets and basically preventing the price from dropping any further, if anything, setting the base for it to recover very sharply. Mm. When you take a look at it on all, in all contexts, you'll find that the Amcon initiative itself has been positive. Indeed, but um, the big question obviously is that will these banks begin to lend again? We've seen private sector credits pretty much over the course of 2010 um, stagnate. We haven't seen any growth in that regard. In fact, we've seen more of a contraction really. And the big question now is with the Amcon intervention, will these banks actually begin to lend? What are your thoughts on this? No, I think Amcon has two, two effects here. One is that by soaking up the toxic assets and institutionalizing that process, it takes away a little bit of the risk in the system. The banks are not lending because of their risk aversion. Once that risk is reduced, uh, like what Amcon is going to do, then you'll find that lending will resume. But lending is going to take some time because it's psychological. People don't, traumatized bankers don't go by and rush back into lending. It takes some time for them to accept it. When they see the results, they become competitive again, then they will start to do, uh, actually execute some lending. On the other hand, the question of it also provides liquidity for them and gives them an institutional framework in which to work for the future. I think that's all said uh, psychologically, I think, and financially, the Amcon experiment is bound to be positive. Well, we look forward to seeing the impact. Let's look at the um, intervention funds. Special intervention funds obviously have been set up for critical sectors. Aviation has received mm -hmm. some. Um, manufacturers oh. are supposed to receive a huge chunk, and of course, power. Um, today, they spelled out plans to introduce a special scheme later this year to support, in particular, agriculture, transport, SMEs, and power. Uh, what are your thoughts on the impact of intervention funds so far? Well, intervention funds are useful in the sense that, one, how strategic are those sectors, one, to the economy, two, what is the materiality of intervention, what the volume of intervention relative to the total loans and requirements of the, of the sector, and three, how is it going to be executed? So far, so good, it's been, it has actually been accessed by the weakest uh, players in those industries and it has prevent collapse, which in turn has actually helped the banking system. It has basically refinanced and helped to restructure the balance sheets of these players. But what is going to make them competitive in the long run is more than this uh, restructuring. In terms of mat materiality, we've talked about 500 billion naira. 500 billion naira is less than 10% of total outstanding loans in the, in the system. So it, it will not have that much impact in terms of total uh, the impact of the quality of the portfolio. But it is a move in the right direction. I guess after a while it will help. But one point I must make is that administrative interventions have never been known to resolve industry competitive issues. So it will help somewhat, but then you need other factors, like them going to the market, those guys putting in equity, further restructuring, realignment, strategic and you know governance. So many things come together. Yeah. This is one major step in the right direction, but it's not enough to solve all the problems in these sectors. What about the issue of capacity for the lenders? Obviously, Agric is less than 10% of total loans. Um, transport and infrastructure in general has also struggled to get funding in Nigeria. How do you see these banks um, making that money available and in the context of their capacity and their knowledge of those um, industries? Uh, well, I agree with you, but the point is this, that there are some contradictions in the policies. On the one hand, you have unbundled universal banking, which gave some of these banks the capacity to use their balance sheet to support these st structures and project finance and all that. Uh, so the banks are dealing with that, how to unbundle and get out of their various subsidiaries and all that, on the one hand. Two, 
you are assuming that the major constraint to performance in these sectors is funding. The other constraints, capacity within the companies themselves, forget about capacity of the lenders, capacity within the companies to even absorb this kind of, stru this kind of structured financing. Mm -hmm. The ability to go out later on to get equity financing to take out some of this debt, right, so that to free up this balance sheet from the burden of this debt. Mm -hmm. And there are so many variables that go into it. Um, I, I guess the, the jury is out as to what the effect would be. But all we know is that doing nothing was no longer an option. If we did nothing, this all sectors will collapse and the economy will suffer for it. Mm. This step is a step, I mean, it's, it's a step, I would say, in a, in the right direction. But I don't know whether it's enough or whether it is consistent with the long-term capacity of these companies to be competitive, not only in a domestic setting, but against international players and international trade flows. There's talk of special, a special scheme being set up later this year. And you know, one thing that strikes me there is the SMEs. We're now in a higher interest rate environment. Yes. And in that context, one might imply that, that implies more risk um, for the borrowers. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on the impact of so I say, monetary policies um, and juxtaposing that against this policy of trying to grow SME um, financing? The, the targeted intervention funds are at a particular rate, subsidized rates of interest. Oh. So even if the general rates of interest are higher, these guys are going to be borrowing at 7% or 8% for 10 years. So it essentially restructures their balance sheet and makes them more bankable and allows them to generate some cash flows, one, two, some revenues and earnings, which will make it attractive for equity investors to come in. So this is not... This is a necessary but not a sufficient condition to actually liberate these companies from the shackles of uh, underperformance. And then of course, there is this, the power sector and the reforms that we're seeing in that regard. The intervention fund has made available for power. Um, the uptake has been relatively low, mm -hmm. uh, to be honest. And there, there are concerns as to to what extent that will increase going forward. There has been talk about the level of development of the power sector mm -hmm. has been the major problem. As In other words, um, the borrowers really are not in a position to borrow, uh, or at least convince the lenders that they are in a position to borrow right now. What are your thoughts on that intervention fund? No, I think, uh, you see, power has two elements. One is the amount of money put, being put into it. The other one is changing the structure of the industry from what was essentially a state monopoly to some form of imperfect competition. Anytime that happens, those things don't happen instantaneously. There's a time between the policy and when you see the effect and when they become actually tangible. One. Two is the fact that some of these things are policy driven. The, the people who are going to take the risk are worried as to what will happen at the elections. And even after the elections, who is going to be in charge of power? Will the same government maintain consistency in the, in the policies after this? So people are taking very tentative steps at this point. I guess by May, June, when you have the new Minister of Power and new people in place, then people can now vote with their wallets. I think that's what's going to happen.